Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. Threat Connect is the industry's most widely adopted threat intelligence platform. Built to unite the people, processes, and technologies across your security team, your organization, and your entire ecosystem of partners. Threat Connect's threat intelligence platform enables your team to collaborate, analyze, and make sense of threat data all in one place. Empower your team towards fast and efficient analysis that leads to decisive action. Transform your entire threat detection and response program today. Claim your free account at threatconnect.com forward slash security weekly. Faraday is an open source collaborative pen test and vulnerability management platform. With real time dashboards and more than 50 tools, Faraday allows seamless integration with your security workflow, allowing CISOs and pen testers to see in real time the impact and risks uncovered from assessments. Scan your network every day using different tools and get one click reports. Creating a collaborative experience, sharing knowledge, and making pen testing fun again. This is Faraday. Visit FaradaySec.com for more information. You know, I, Hey, hey, we're back. Whoa. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? This is going to be a fabulous technical segment. Fabulous. On a little project that Joff is working on, which I was helping test, and then we ripped all our equipment down and put a new network rack in here in the office slash studio. So I'm going to see if my server's still up. I don't think it is, Joff. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I put one up uh, to test as well. So, you know, we're, you're not alone. And it seems to be working well. Good, good. So why don't you tell everyone, tell what's about the, it? what is the problem we're trying to solve, Joff? Oh, okay. thanks. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Santa Colangelo, <laughs> uh, for uh, priming me uh, for that, that particular question. I'm not quite sure. I thought it was cool. Okay, so here's how this thing came about. We were talking on the show about uh, DNS black holing um, some time ago, about two or three weeks ago. And... I whipped up a script to uh, create uh, bind nine zone files uh, as we were talking about that. And then I think as we got onto the show, it's like, well, where do we want to send the traffic? And everybody's like, well, 127.001, where else are we going to send the traffic? I was like, well, wait a minute. If I am going to uh, black hole all these domains using a list um, you know, from malwaredomains.com or using a list from any one of the uh, common openly published malware domain lists that are out there, maybe I want to send them to a box that's right. listening <clears throat> and capture the traffic. And I well, think you know, it's interesting, Joff, just to, to set the geeky nerdy stage, we were yeah. uh, <laughs> having a very serious nerdy discussion about is it faster to send them to 127.0.1? Is it faster to send them to 0 .0, 0.0.0 was one theory out there. And is it faster to just set up a dead web server, or not a dead web server, but a web server that serves a blank page or like a really, really, really tiny image instead. And what performance-wise is the best solution for that solution. problem? Right, right. I, well, safety-wise, I don't know if it's the best idea to, to throw them at 127001. You never know what it might do. <laughs> right. Uh, it it could end true. up being uh, something that actually uh, someone thinks that you're going to do that and then goes, ha, ha. Yeah, exactly. Um, they could make a connection to something. Uh, yeah. System. Well, and yeah. I was never too comfortable with sending people to 127001. I was... So I came, you know, uh, a little bit like you, Lance. I've got a, uh, a long history of network engineering. Um, Paul and I have some stuff in common. We used to work in large university environments. Well, his was a small university environment, but I used to work compared in Compared to yours, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Mine was small uh, compared to yours. And um, Still is. You know, we, we were... Uh, whoa. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, university, so, sorry. But what Joff said was, look, look we, can, we can send them anywhere. And he's like, yeah, why don't like we... We can, we can redirect this anyway. Why yeah. don't we redirect it to something that we can look at the traffic, you know, and do something. Right, there. so sinkhole style, right? So... Pretty much. Uh, yeah, so like, I don't know if you're using Flask. Have you guys used Flask in Python? Yes. So pa yeah, I've yeah. used Flask. And, so uh, Flask is amazing for something like that, too. Like, if you set up your own boxes, you don't even have to have your own... Like, you don't have to set up complicated web servers or anything. You just go, hey, run it on this and go to this, uh, to my IP right there, so... That might be something. That way, it's all inline too. Right. Well, well that's, that's John took it a step further. He's like, I want to <clears throat> capture the traffic, and he's like, Why don't we just listen on every port and capture whatever they send us? Which you was, could do promiscuous. Yeah, it was just, like yeah. in the, to my because my one of my well, projects was well, honey well, it was, ports. It was, it which, was more than it was more than that though, um, Lance. In the TCP case, I was like, <laughs> We need to actually handshake mm -hmm. and, and then tear down the connection. It's fine, you know. But but send him a Synac, 
right. uh, handshake, get the, get the first bit of data they send, and then reset the connection or, or fin, fin, act, whatever. Right. Um, so that's what, I, that's what I set up on doing. And I said it on the show. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to write something here mm-hmm. um, that just listens on any port, but it, but it takes it a step further in that in the TCP case, it will um, actually handshake, mm-hmm. and then it will log... What, um, what it message a gift out. Yeah. yeah, it'll log whatever the first request that comes out. The first, in my case, it's the first 8K of data by default. It just reads it from the socket and puts it into a file. Right. And then resets the, uh, resets the connection. And so I went further and I listened on UDP as well. Um, that's <laughs> Which, not... Were you has using some, uh, Scapey has some or I, I'm just curious on the, the actual handshake across every port? No, the handshake is true Python sockets. So you're just doing sockets. Uh, okay, cool. Sweet. Yep, straight up sockets. Um, okay. And so <clears> I, I took it a step further. Um, not only am I listening uh, TCP, I'm listening UDP, and I'm also listening for ICMP yeah. traffic. And I'm actually going to take it one step further and do a raw socket uh, for, for anything else, probably. Right. Um, but so that, that's what bore, uh, born the uh, project um, called Tachyon Net, which is unfortunately not a good, not a good name, as we've just learned. But we're, we're going to change the name. <laughs> well, if you're going for speed, since Tachyon is supposed to be a uh, faster than the speed of light and higher, right? Its base is speed of light and then go higher when you think about it from the thing. We definitely want to choose whatever the answer is. Uh, what you bind to or send it to has to be fast, right? Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> and, and when you're listening on all ports, I found, you want to use some discretion because... Yeah, I was trying UDP, to imagine that. With UDP, right. imagine if it's listening on port 53 and, oops, I just black holed all my DNS responses. <laughs> <laughs> why can't I get to the internet anymore? I don't understand. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I know why. <laughs> yeah, you do need to be a little careful on what box you deploy it. It's first really... Of all. Well, right. I had some hilarious moments like, why isn't it? Oh, that makes perfect sense now. <laughs> so, so one of the one of the first things, just talking about the project a little bit further, one of the very first things I ran into, which which I was aware of already, mm-hmm. but anybody who's written anything like this suddenly realizes that the standard kernel limits in any Linux kernel, yes, the number of file descriptors right. you can open is typically ten twenty four. Yes. Well, if you're opening. 65,535 ports TCP and then 65,535. Well, that's what I was trying to figure UDP. out. How are you, you need doing a shitload that? more file descriptors? Yeah. <laughs> that, well, that's what I was trying to figure out. So, were you doing so in just the technical because I haven't seen the code, but that's why I was asking where you're using Scapey. Are you picking up like okay, whatever port picks up, and you're doing a I gotta receive on this port promiscuously and then responding, or are you actually opening up all the ports and then no, just I'm opening f- up? Every socket in the code. Okay, right. so it takes a while for net set to. So scroll. have you tried it the other way, where you could actually <laughs> just emulate based on the received promiscuous value and say, "I'm going to respond back to that based on that port because I picked this up promiscuously." That no, might be I, something I, I more haven't. scalably, right? If we're talking speed, right? Just thinking, um, you could pick it up and say, "Okay, I'm just going to do a conditional statement that says I saw this on this tra- this port." And then, you know, I'm going to yeah, yeah. do it. So, so it's a good question, Lance. But in, in the past, when I've tried things like that, right. uh, you have to suppress the kernel response because yep. the TCP stack on the kernel is, is going to send a TCP reset if there's nothing listening on that socket. Right. Oh, uh, so you had to open it. I got it. Yeah. Oh, plus, so plus you if you're not behind your firewall, you're going to have weird issues anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and you want to complete easier. the handshake because in the promiscuous right. mode, you might just get the sin. Then if well, that's what I was going to say is you emulate that afterwards. But, yes, you you're still – yeah, yeah. I got you. What Lance yeah. is saying is you can emulate. But if, if you emulate it, you have to suppress – the kernel reset Spons, yeah. so right. that you can emulate the Cynac. Uh, and, right, because it's going to control it because it starts at the IP ID, then goes to the I, yeah, ISN, right, and then right, goes right, over right. Yeah, yep. yeah. So the <laughs> other issue that you run into, uh, and people say, well, you use Scapey, and, and, and Scapey is a great project, don't get me right. wrong. But I've written some uh, pretty extensive projects in the wireless space, particularly with Scapey, mm-hmm. and you run into performance limitations mm. fairly quickly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, that, that doesn't scale very well when you're trying to do things like this. So hence, hence I came around to the socket solution. So what this thing does, and I'll, I'll share a window here as I run it. Um, what this thing does is listens on all sockets uh, with a whole bunch of flags that you can configure mm-hmm. um, and uh, opens the sockets. Now, one of the other things I, I, I learned very quickly was um, – if you are trying to test this thing and you are listening on every single socket, mm-hmm. um, guess what? You have no more ephemeral oh. ports that you can use. <laughs> <laughs> right. So if you try to test it from localhost, you're screwed, <laughs> hmm. um, which is kind of interesting. So here's the help on it. It's just TN uh, for Tachyon Net, and here's the kind of options you have. It's a Python program. Mm-hmm. 
Um, you can bind it to an address. By default, it binds to all addresses on the box. Mm -hmm. Specify a min TCP port, a max TCP port, a min UDP port, a max UDP port, a buffer size that you can pass in for listening, the number of threads that you will uh, listen on, uh, and then you can suppress listening on UDP or TCP or ICMP if you want. Mm -hmm. um, by default, the thing opens up uh, 32 threads for TCP and 32 threads for UDP and divides the ports up amongst those threads. Mm. And then it opens a single thread up for the ICMP traffic. Right. Um, it does uh, log to syslog as well. Um, you nice. can specify syslog facility. It'll use default, uh, default user. Uh, and listens for traffic uh, on every possible socket. And like Paul said, the netstat output is, is, is kind of funny. Um, you can stick the... <laughs> um, so if you run it by default... Um, for example, if I just ran it like this, uh, it puts the output in the foreground and goes ahead and opens up all the sockets. And the default settings allow you to run it as a non-privileged user, and you'll get 1024 to 32768 in both TCP and UDP cases. So okay. I, I have one question, uh, yeah. if I may. Um, so what did you do about the fault? Did you have to actually, do you have to configure file descriptors to be, be able to support yes. this? Yes. yes. Okay. So let me. Um, yeah, that's probably most important for before they run this. I was just thinking yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And and every Linux distribution, and even depending on which yeah, version no, of the I know. Linux I distribution you're <laughs> running, it, I this thing is like it. you're gonna yeah. just hog everything. Uh, also, yeah, so in, yeah. in the Ubuntu case, just to, to raise that point, there's uh, etsysecuritylimits.com, mm -hmm. and if you jump down to the bottom of this file, I dropped in a couple of lines here. But for every user, the number of file descriptors is up at five hundred thousand. Uh, in this file, and that's how you would configure that in the Ubuntu case. Mm -hmm. uh, I dropped a line in there for root. For some reason, it didn't include root in the wildcard. I don't quite know why. Um, it's a maybe feature. Why does it by design? Or no? it, yeah, well, it's, 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 it, is, it is in the security, so they're probably trying to secure, like basically the 1024 below is probably something they didn't want you messing with or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, it's a feature. <laughs> so that, yeah. that drops, that drops our, our socket limit up to 500,000, which is sufficient uh, to support um, the usage of this thing. It's, so, like my, it's like my segue. You have to put so many miles on it before right. it lets you go over three miles an hour, and then it lets you go over yeah. six yeah, another miles Another an question hour. is, Does it? what happens if you have a, a port that's already open that is not binded to? Will it error, or will it just accept it and move it, on? It errors. I'll Ooh. show you some of the logs in just a minute. Um, so here, here I'm <coughs> running errors. in the foreground. It's listening. Um, and in the foreground, it just gives you a, like a you know, little spinny thing and gives you the default output, right? So I'm going to open another window here, which you won't be able to see. But I'm just going to connect to the box that's running it mm -hmm. and just um, send a few w w bytes to it with uh, Netcat. Mm -hmm. um, just give me a second to. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a good way to find out that all your ports better be off first. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. right. So. Yeah, you do. Yeah, it, it, it you, see what, you see what happened when I, I did a Netcat to port 1234, and right. it logs here mm -hmm. the number of connections and the number of bytes, and right. it just gives you that running counter. I think that's one of the features you implemented. Uh, well, I was like, Job, I really need like in exclude these ports from the thing. Like, I want to just tell it to listen on all, but exactly. I just want to exclude like SSH right. so I can still get into the box. Well, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is it, 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 you? You might want to have that just because I was thinking also Raspberry Pi potential, right? Yeah. But you well, could let, just let, let wrap it down. That. Yeah. Let, me, let yeah. me show you that log. Also, if yeah. I just ping the box, for example, if I ping ten ten one thirty, which is my box here, uh -huh. um, it's see how the ICMP counter incremented. So it's logging that stuff and putting it to disk, right? Right, right. So let me, let me get out of the, uh, the system because I'm only sharing one window, and I will show you the logs. Um, so by default, it'll create a .tachyonnet directory, mm -hmm. and it creates tn.log here, mm. okay? And when it first opens up, um, not only does it, uh, it logs every connection, but actually I'll do a more on this thing, um, it also tells you if it had an error binding a port, and it'll just skip over that one if it. So I'm using SSH, right? And right. it skipped over SSH. Mm -hmm. So it, it's able to handle that condition um, in, in the port binding. I have a little bug here. This one is a bug. I think one of the threads is tripping over one of the other threads. Um, that port is actually being yeah. bound. Are you actually using straight uh, mu um, like multi-threading there? Or are you doing like G events or what are you? No, it's 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 actually straight up Python threading. So threading. it's not okay, cool. process. Yep. It's Python threading. Yep. Um, so the other thing that's cool about this is it creates a, a log structure that includes the current date, and then any connection you make, it logs it as the source port, desk port, desk IP, and dot .log, right, with the protocol in it. Mm -hmm. So everything, every single thing is logged. If the same port pair comes through, it just goes ahead and appends to the same file. Oh, nice. Um, 
So, you know, the ICMP, for example, I was doing pings. Well, pings have a payload of, you know, right. ASCII, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, A, B, C, D, et cetera, right? Depending, um, depending on the operating system. Right. Sending depending on the operating system, right? right. TCP, I think I typed in a few odd characters here. There's the TCP logs, right? You might want to do a session state. So, like, say it is another thing that's hitting into it or something. You have it where it can say that's one and that's two. So if it depends to the log, at least it has like kind of a break for session state. Yeah, that, that's actually a good point. Yeah. I might actually put in a little header in there. In yep. between. Um, the also thing is, you know, you got Vialog syslog here, and it is logging to syslog by default as well. Nice. So you get this kind of stuff coming out of syslog. Which is probably cool. important for log rotation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if you were to set this up. Let's just load all yeah. this up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know so what? I, you know that's what's awesome, job. That's very um, awesome. I'm I'm thinking this this has like other uses. If I want to get like you said, that it's a Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. and just yep. like drop this on the network, mm -hmm. like yep. just drop it on the network. If it's something that no one else should be hitting, it's like a neat little honeyport to run in your network. Well, another thing is it would be especially on the internal side of it. Uh, imagine what you might discover. Uh, imagine have you played with Apache Tika? No. Okay. So Tika and some of the other Apache projects are great for like content extraction and like doing like uh, named entity recognition and like things that you can categorize your data very quickly, right? right. Similar to what Elasticsearch and Kibana do for yeah. some basic stuff. So even with an elk, right? Any of these kind of systems though, the way you can pipe it back in is you could actually probably parse out like if there is something in your network that's nasty, mm -hmm. right? You're gonna, it, it, you know, you can look at this thing and, and just kind of get a kind of a view, a view of all right, what's binary, what's not binary, what's this, what's exactly. this normal? And you can parse out like known entities, right? Yep. You know this. Um, and if you make a filter, you could probably say, well, what, uh, what's, um, you know, like, I mean, you could, uh, you could have fun with this with Elk, actually. Well, well, you could the, have a the, lot well, of fun with know, this in loading well, it I, I was going, search, yeah. I'm going down that road, actually, Lance. I'm thinking a, a number of things. I'm thinking maybe sticking Bro on a, on a, on a box right. with it. Yeah, right. Um, and then feeding the output of... of um, and uh, actually, this is bro and, and Suricata, because Suricata yeah. might pick up some stuff too off yeah. of that data, right? Yeah. So well, yeah. what's interesting too is when you just put this uh, tachyon to be named something later on your. <laughs> Sorry, on your I feel like I'm ruining no, that today. No, 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 fine. <laughs> um, I'm crying now. I'm crying. <laughs> if anyway. you just take it on a box, though, like immediately you're going to see, and you tell it to listen to every single port. Actually, you're going to see all this broadcast. Let's just yeah. call it tack garbage. it on because we're going to be tacking it on a bro. Oh, we're going to be right. tacking yeah. it on to this. Let's go ahead and run that. So if we run it on all ports just to prove the point right. um, you can actually do this <laughs> so you have all ports turned off now <laughs> we can we can we can actually do this right and right. and it cranks up and i just ran it in daemon mode so it's running in the background right, right? okay and then we go TM's tail running. we can tail the logs right we, we can tail the logs and we can look at our net stat and go oh my yeah lots. Lots. Right. Net stat is <laughs> right. right it's like a net I mean, stat denial service it's truly thing on every freaking Right, but if you put a box in there that's unheard of, and suddenly you put it in there, and it starts getting hits outside the ARP requests and the standard stuff you get hey, off the, the network. Um, the a I saw the Apple one all over the place. Yeah, uh, they have the ARP. Uh, SSDP. Or, the SSDP, um, and then they have... The, um, uh, oh, it's from their stupid... Um, what's what it, is called? it called? The Bluetooth... The, um, what is the... Oh, my Airdrop. God. Airdrop. Uh, uh, Airdrop. Bonjour. You're thinking Bonjour. 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 Thank you. Okay. It's all based on yeah. Bonjour. So you see okay. a ton of Bonjour. Right, Friggin but if you mm -hmm. filter out those, right, you might yeah. actually, if you did straight out TCP dump style, <laughs> does BPF filtering still work in Python, right? So, mm -hmm. oh, so sure like, we yeah. could do BSD packet filter, uh, filtering through this, right? And in that way, if you could send it, like, um, I'm thinking C here, so I don't remember how it would be done in Python, but I remember writing some code that would literally just use the, the, a flag that does a BPF, like TCP dump, yeah, yeah. and you can filter out the bonjours. And then if anything hits your thing, you're going to be like, why is it hitting me why outside of that anyway? Right. Why is it even looking for me, right, well, internally that, in your that, network? That's a, that's a really good suggestion to put, put some sort of flag that suppresses certain traffic. Right, right. right. Or, or you yeah. can control it around BPF. Uh, does, does Python have a BPF library? Yeah, I'm well, sure it, uh, it does. There's, okay. P, there's PCAPI. Um, yeah, yeah, that'll work. Okay, okay. yep. Um, <clears throat> and so there's, there's ways. Again, oh. you're going to packet capture, not a Check out this one, actually. Uh, can you go to a website real quick? Can not we show... What? Okay, do, can you... Who's got that thing right there? Joff. Um, oh, oh, that's me. So uh, go to haka-security.org, and this might be something useful for with your tool. I just learned about this. H A K A no H A K A, a at, yeah. So because I was looking at Hacka, but I found out no, it's Hacka, right? So check this out. Yeah. H A C K A. No, just uh, that. Yeah, you're, yeah. And then you go. H A K A dot org. Uh, no dash security dot org. H A K A dash security dot org. This sounds like a New Zealand thing. Oh. It might be. 
But it works for. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. That. So right. this could be very powerful yes. too with it, right? So software defined security. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Right. And it's got a protocol grammar. Right. It's got this. It's something so you, you can, can profile probably, bonjour. So it's not just and it based works on for the port. last search in Kibana, So we right. can work yeah. with that data into that. So it's that. not just port. You can basically yeah. profile. This is bonjour traffic. And Correct. So you can, like say ignore all yeah. bonjour right. so traffic. So this, so this yeah. might be a player a like well, you're talking about bro, process. but this also might be another player you put in the middle to 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 massage the data you're picking out. Yeah. 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 So interesting. Interesting. Anyway. I think um, – so let me stop sharing screen here for a so second. So I, I think this would be interesting, Joff, to throw on a Pi and shut down all the services, connect to it over serial or yep. something of the like. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly and, uh, where and, uh, I was going. I've yeah. got, yeah. going, going got my, an Odroid mm -hmm. here, um, and, uh, so which I, I like better than the Pi platform. And I think shipping it as a, as a little appliance – uh, like you said, just just with serial configuration, yep. uh, it makes a great little box. Now I can see two uh, places that might be interesting to throw that. Put that on uh, an IP on your external network and see what it pulls from the internet. Right. Then go into your internal network and set up a new route for an internal class that you mm -hmm. shouldn't be using right. internally and put it the only box right. out in see the low if, end yeah. of that, that well, we range. Well, we used to just monitor. Yeah, so like, I used to, so that, yeah, that's, that'll that's look a, for scanners that's right there. Yeah. yeah, in the yeah. university, we would just monitor with NetFlow, right? Yeah, Job. exactly. Paul, you, yeah. Paul, I was we just going there. I used there. to actually yeah. go further than that. I used to have, um, so I've suggested this to actually some customers once in a while. You know, most people have something like a, a class B on the inside of their network, and it's divided up and subnetted in some way. There is, you know, everything in, in the routing world as long Ooh. as prefix match. So there's nothing wrong with putting a short prefix route mm -hmm. that goes to some sort of black hole box. Mm -hmm. Well, putting this as the destination to the short prefix uh, route is a perfect solution to find out what's going on in your network right. that is not legitimate subnets, so, right? Backscatter, yeah. then, and then you name it. If you we know? receive a packet from someone, we can just end map them back and store those results as well. <laughs> <laughs> there again goes offensive There's countermeasures. Offensive countermeasures. So, guy. <laughs> actually, so I, I think a combination of this and bro, actually, in the same little pie mm -hmm. or same little odroid would be a great little solution. And another powerful idea with this, and again, I don't know what tools do this automatically, but have you heard of Yara? Y-A-R-A? Yeah, yeah, I have. So, yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So Yara and obviously Suricata signature, yep. auto signature development, or at least the auto, like, hexadecimal development for like, okay, I want to position this in a malware uh, Yara, Yara thing so that if then you can go and pass it to virus total. Right and yeah. do a hunt yeah. and say, what is this related See, I, to? I think, Jeff, we need to hire Lance on to Tachyon not dot net. We talk here on Lance too. So Tachyon Lance is the, is so right the, now, is the architect I mean, small, for this Small project. sneak preview Great. announcement. I believe Tachyon is going <laughs> to appear uh, in the ADHD distribution uh, from, nice. from Black Hills. Oh, cool, because I, I actually we should talk about ADHD and hackers someday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah. Pump and, the, um, uh, the so Linux distro. John, and then we'll build um, a GUI for it, and we'll just sell it through offensive countermeasures. Yeah, well, right. well my, good <laughs> my good friend and boss, John yeah. Strand, when he saw it, was like, oh, that's cool. We're going to put that in ADHD. Dude, so, ADHD is awesome, by the way. That, that, yeah, that's well, an awesome you. Linux yeah. distro. So, so, so we're, we're going that direction. Anyway, bottom line is, uh, I was really excited about it, about the idea, uh, and it came to fruition pretty much on this show. So thanks yeah. to everybody brainstorming about it, and I, I birthed this thing, and I think it's going to be a great little tool. So. Awesome. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely uh, share it out, too. So it's available on the website? Or? Did you it is available on the website. It? Let yeah. me, uh, it's bit. Dot, right now, we may change this, um, but right now, let me uh, just go ahead and just put it up as a URL. Yeah. Uh, is it also going to be a GitHub or are you set by a There's GitHub? A bit, uh, it is, a, it's a Bitbucket. Oh, Bitbucket. Uh, perfect. Okay. Um, Bit.ly slash tachyonnet uh, should get us there. Or you, yeah, check, or you so check the link in the show notes. Yeah, we'll put a link in the yeah, show notes. There is the link there in the one. show notes, but I'll just, just, just to prove it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I got more architectural ideas to keep popping <laughs> up <laughs> this thing. <laughs> Dude, he's he's like all over it. Well, I am I'm definitely open to suggestions. So Lance, please bring bring your suggestions. Yeah. But we should have like an honorary salad shooter for for Lance. That's my was my nickname. <laughs> salad shooter, and there's a salad shooter right there. That's my salad shooter. You hey, can't have hey, my um, salad shooter. It's on the, on the shelf up there, but we Is should we should like present you with an honorary salad shooter. So, so <laughs> that's great. Just, just you're awesome. gonna have to do you're gonna have to do salad shooter it, challenge isn't coins. Isn't that going yeah. to be? A, a drink with just special ingredients in it. Don't we call that the honorary salad, salad shooter? <laughs> That's a different drink. All right, Joff, thank you very much. Bit.ly slash tacky on net. Thank okay. you very much. With that, we take a short break, come back and talk about the stories broadcasting this live. week. <laughs> That's awesome.